Hallelujah. Let's give God a big hand. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God, for the wonderful works He has done. He has been doing and is still doing. And is still doing in, um, in, in Cambodia. Amen. And uh, when I was watching this, Sister Yen showed it to me that she said uh, this is their mission trip that they just gone, uh, been there last month in June. And when I was watching it, it brings back some memory. I've been there too. And I was thinking, where did it all start? Then I began to realize it all started in Samal Island, all right? In Samal Island, where a sister actually responded. Sister Angela responded to the call of God. And God called her. She was obedient. She gave up everything, left everything behind. She went there alone. And God called her later in partnership with the church to start the X program. Adopt a child to school program. And on average, every year, about 100, more than 100 students are being blessed by each and every one of us in the church. Each and every one of you seated here, many of you gave generously. And to date, since the start program, in Samal alone, we are already blessing about 2,000 students. That is a lot of students. Just think of our one full church. We have brought up a whole generation of a church in Samal Island. And now they have gone to even Siem Reap, Cambodia. Amen. And one of the students from that program is Juma. As you can see, when he was just a little boy, 2008 to 11, and uh, your giving helped fund his primary school, his secondary school, and later on, your giving also helped him finish his certificate to be certified in the civil engineering field. And when he was, he finished one day in 2013, a disaster strike Philippines, and he even volunteered himself. Uh, and he began to realize that whatever skills and techniques and gifting that God has imparted in him, he can actually use it for the glory of God. And he began to use it and know he knows that he can actually apply his skills in the mission field. And then, of course, later you saw him and heard him just now. He shared that later on, he decided and also responded to the call and joined Angela Bruins and RG and brought his wife as well to Cambodia. And today they are serving the children in Cambodia. And in Cambodia, 9% of all children in Cambodia do not finish their primary school. We're talking about millions. Huh? So this is what they are doing. And from the picture, from the images, you could see the children come every day to learn English and then Saturday, Sunday for their Sunday school and also uh, from their teenage uh, youth group. And they are doing a wonderful job. And from Juma, the second generation after Angela, you can see now there's a new generation of Cambodians rising up. Amen? Amen. You can see how God leads and generation after generation. So do not underestimate every dollar and every cent that you gave generously to the kingdom of God because like a seed, it has multiplied effect. And just like what uh, Brother Martin and shared last week, right? If you were here, it's like an apple seed. The apple seed actually has a potential of thousands and thousands of apples. Last week, I was very encouraged by Brother Martin and Sister Diana of their lives, of their obedience, of their response to the Lord. This week, when I watched the video, it reminds me, reminded me of the obedience of Angela and later on of Juma as well. As I look at all their lives, something strikes me very vividly. is their obedience, their response. When God intervened and came into their life, they responded positively. They said, yes, Lord, and God used them mightily and their lives will never be the same again. Of course, I'm not saying here all of us must be full-time missionary. I really do not believe everyone is called to be full-time missionaries but this is just example. But definitely, all of us have a call. And our call is to be fisher of men. And that's the title of my sermon this morning, Fisher of Men. Before we begin, let us just bow our heads in a word of prayer and hand this time to the Lord. Father Lord, we thank you. Your word says, when two or three are gathered in your name, you are with us. And this morning, we sense your tangible presence in our midst. We ask that you come and speak into our hearts. More importantly, Lord, let our hearts be soft. Let our hearts be a good ground that your, your word can be planted and grow for seeds. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, today, I would just like to quickly share with you 
a very quick sermon, but this sermon is taken from Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. I'd like to invite every one of us to read together with me um, in the, to read the Word of God. Amen. One, two, three. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the Word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put up into the deep water and let down the nets of a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they have done so, they caught much, so much large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help him. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the son of Zebedee, Simon's partner. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats on the shore, left everything, and followed him. Amen. I struggle to read because I have Lao Hua, you know. <laughs> Just now, people say, I saw. Pastor James said, I saw him. He was born. I saw him being born. Now he see me being Lao Hua. I was like, <laughs> that's life. Huh? Life is really short. Huh? Life is short. We live our life for Jesus. Amen. And this story is wonderful because this is significant. Because this is the first disciple that Jesus called. And the first disciple that Jesus called, Jesus called him to be a fisher of men. Fisher of men. Matthew also recounted the same incident in his own book, the book of Matthew. And Matthew recorded Jesus saying, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Fishers of men. Jesus did not say, this is the first disciple. Jesus didn't tell his very first disciple. So first disciple... It's significant because it sets the direction, it sets the purpose why a disciple is being called. And that's to be a fisher of men. Jesus didn't say, come follow me and I'll give you richness. Come follow me. I'll give you so much wealth, a peaceful life that you can buy two bungalow house, a few shop lots and leave them to your children. Jesus didn't say, come follow me so that you can attend church comfortably weekly in an aircon place and enjoy my presence. Jesus didn't say, come follow me and I'll make you musicians in church. Neither did Jesus say, come follow me and I'll let you study my word, so much word that you feel so encouraged all the time. All these are important. All these are not wrong. The blessings of God is not wrong. Being a musician, leading worship, uh, doing everything, serving in church, it's not wrong, it's good. The Bible has its own place. But the fundamental of why Jesus called us to be His disciple, to be His follower, is to be a fisher of men. Nothing else. No other but and end or all. It's just follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus called His first disciple to be fishers of men. And it's so important just think about it. The very first disciple when Jesus saw, Jesus instructed them, I'll make you fishers of men. And then later on, when Jesus is about to rise to heaven, what was Jesus' last instruction to his disciple? Go and make disciples of all nations. Jesus' first instruction is to ask people to be a fishers of men. Jesus' last instructions to his disciples, to his followers, is still the same. To be a fisher of men. Nothing else. Jesus did not, before he goes, in, go and enjoy every service in church. Amen. That's not the instruction. Go, go and make disciples. First and last instructions are the same. Be a fisher of men. And I believe this is the primary purpose of why we are left here on earth. Why is it that we are not caught up immediately. The moment you say a previous prayer, boom, you are lifted up immediately. Why? Because we are left on earth to be a fisher 
of men. Really, that is what I believe is the primary purpose. And this is also the thing you can't do in heaven. You can't fish in heaven. There are many things you can do on earth and in heaven, but these are Fishing is something you can't do in heaven. Just think about all the things that you have been encouraged all these years in church to pray for the sick, to cast out demons. All this you can't do in heaven. In heaven, you cannot pray for the sick people because there's not a single sick people in heaven. In heaven, you cannot cast out demons. There are no demons. They are all in hells, in Hades. You can't give to the missions in heaven. You cannot give a single cent to sponsor another child. In heaven, next time, you can't sponsor another missionary. There's no more opportunity. Even the roads are made of gold. Why are you talking about giving to God? No more giving in heaven. And no more preaching of gospel in heaven. Everyone is a believer. In heaven, you turn left, right, center, up, right, down, right. Everyone is a believer. You cannot fish in heaven. And this is why you are given the homework, the task on earth to fish. Amen? We are called to fish on earth, not in heaven. While you, on the contrary, you can think of all the things we are doing in church. Enjoy the presence of God, wonderful worship today. I really enjoy the worship. But I can tell you, and I believe that in heaven, the worship will be even more, more intense because you are seeing and worshipping Jesus face to face. You might be enjoying the Word of God, the Bible study, the book of Romans, this book and that book. But I can tell you, in, in the heavens, you are Hearing the Word of God live, it will come alive even more. Hearing from God Himself. There's nothing more that you can ask from in heaven. But there's one thing you really cannot do. All of us can't do it, is we cannot fish in heaven. Can you just tell the one next to you, we cannot fish in heaven. And therefore, we really need, we are called to be fishers of men. We are called now, disciples. How many of you are followers of Jesus Christ? Just raise your hand. You believe in Jesus. Amen. And we are all called to be fishers of men because He says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And this morning, I want to quickly just share with you three reminders that I've learned from this passage. Three reminders to be a better fisher of men. The first thing I learned is that to be a good fisher of men, we must be willing to be interrupted. It must be willing to be interrupted. You know, the book of uh, Luke chapter 5, it says, verse 2, um, Peter says, he's already washing nets. So here is a man who has toiled whole night. He has worked very hard casting the net because the best time to fish is at night, not the daytime. So he is casting the nets, pulling out, casting the net again, and then pulling again, casting again, pulling. He has been repeating the entire night and he has taught Nothing. He has caught nothing, right? And he's already anchoring his boat and he's already, Bible says, he was washing his net already. So he has finished his business in the day. This is the morning. He already anchored his boat, pulled out all the dirty nets, that he, all the rubbish that he has caught out in the net. He's washing them, removing the rubbish, hanging them and drying them one by one. And suddenly there's this man called Jesus who chose to step into his boat and then ask him, can you pull me out a little bit? Whatever Jesus asked Peter to do is nothing glamorous, no need, any skill. Just pull the ship out a little bit, the boat out a little bit by the shore. Just pull out a little bit so that Jesus can sit down there and talk to his people. Now, have you ever thought how inconvenient it is? How interrupted it is Peter would have felt? You know, Peter is at a very disappointed moment. By this time, Peter was very disappointed. He's very tired. He's very busy. He still has so many nets to clean. Later on, maybe he has to find other things to do. He has a busy schedule ahead and he's tired and he's disappointed and he's in a very bad mood. And the last thing he wants is for this man called Jesus, whom he doesn't know, to come and interrupt him and come into his boat, step into his boat without asking and ask him to pull out, pull out to the shore. But I praise God because Peter was willing to be interrupted. Peter was willing to be inconvenienced. He actually, okay, pull you out, pull you out a little bit. Doesn't it speak to all of our lives that we are all so busy as well? How many of you are not busy? Raise your hand. 
nobody. We are all so busy. I find myself getting busier and busier and busier every single day. The sleep gets shorter and shorter and shorter, not longer and longer. Very busy at work, so many deadlines to meet, juggling between taking care of parents, taking care of kids, taking care of everything, running all the errands like, a, like October, juggling everything. Busy, 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 busy. And suddenly, sometimes God put a person with needs into my life. Suddenly, the person is a very genuine needs. Come and interrupt my busy schedule. Am I willing to be interrupted by this person? I know he has a need or she has a need, but do, am I willing to be interrupted? Am I willing to be inconvenienced by this person that Jesus has placed into my life? Sometimes I'm like, ah, oh, really, it's a bad time. Really, I have no time to bother about you. But I'm glad Peter chose Peter chose to be interrupted, to be inconvenienced. Amen? Likewise, maybe God has placed somebody in your life, someone with needs, and you're wondering, should I help this person? This is the interruption that God has placed into their life. If you want, if we want to be a good fisher of men, we need to constantly look out for the interruption that Jesus has placed into our life because these are opportunities where Jesus stepped into our boat. Over here, you can see that Jesus chose to step into Simon's Peter boat. These are opportunities where Jesus stepped into our boat. Maybe you have been challenged last week. You watch all these videos and begin to think, maybe I should go for a short-term mission trip. And Holy Spirit is speaking to you. But you are saying, oh, my plans, I have a plan year end or next year. We want to save up and we want to go to Japan for a vacation. This kind of mission trip, ah, it's an interruption, right? It's an interruption. And somehow I have so many kids. How to bring all the young kids is an interruption. But this morning, let us be reminded, be willing to be interrupted and inconvenienced by the work of the Lord. Maybe you are thinking of, ah, I was, I'm thinking to challenge to give to the Lord. But, but I'm saving up for my next car. No? I, every month, I'm putting out an amount to save my next car. Can I still give to the Lord? But giving to the Lord means that I'm going to stall my plan. Um, what should I choose? Be willing to be interrupted and intercepted and inconvenienced by the plan of the Lord. Because are, are we willing? Because when we are willing, we allow Jesus to step into our boat. The reality is there's no possibility of genuine encounter with Christ if you don't give space for Jesus to step into your boat, if you don't allow any interruption or inconvenience of your plans, it's all my plan. This morning we sing, Jesus, you are the king. You are the kingship. What does a king do? A king dictates the direction. A king sets the direction. The king chooses the battle to fight. A king provides. A king is sovereign and makes all the decisions. Are we willing to allow Jesus to step into our boat and to interrupt our plans? You know, they can't have genuine encounter with Christ if we, we don't want to let any interruption to come. To come. Peter will not have, have a life transformation moment from that point if he doesn't allow Jesus to interrupt him halfway through all the, down, the downcast time, the busiest time, the worst time in his life, and he'll allow Jesus to interrupt him. Likewise, Moses will not be able to do what he did and experience the goodness of God, the miracles of God, if he was not willing to allow the burning bush to interrupt him one day when he was shepherding. Rebecca, if she was not willing to be interrupted by a stranger who asked for water and she went the extra mile to drew all the water and feed all the camels, if she was not willing to be interrupted, she, will, she would not have been the bride, the wife of Isaac, who will give birth to the descendants of Abraham. We need to allow Jesus to interrupt our lives, to step into our boat. If we want to be fishers of men, we cannot just say, this is my plan, this is my life, this is what I'm going to do, A, B, C, I'm going for this, I'm going for that, and this is what I'm going to do, I, this is set. We need to allow Jesus to intervene and interrupt your life, put people with needs into your life, and we need to stop and allow Jesus to step into our boat. Amen. Can you tell the one next to you, let Jesus step into your boat. Amen. The second thing is, if we want to be a good fisher of men, do not look at the circumstances and do not trust 
your past experience. Over here in Luke chapter 5, Peter said to Jesus very clearly, he's just stating a fact, he's not complaining. He's just telling Jesus, Master, we have worked hard all night and I'm telling you, I, we have not caught anything at all. When Peter is saying that, he is very certain that he is a professional fisherman and Jesus is just the son of a carpenter. Here is a carpenter asking a fisherman to go out and cast down that in the daytime. In the daytime, if not even the nighttime. Right? So, but he says, but because you say so. So what Peter is saying that, he's saying that, no, Lord, I'm not focusing on my current circumstances. I'm not focusing on my, on my experience, but I'm going to focus on what you say, Lord. Having seen all this going around, the circumstances, my experience, but I'm just going to trust your word, your word. And therefore, he came out with this forward. But because you say so, because you say so. Now, some of us are in this current situation, you know. You, maybe you have um, been preaching to your husband for the longest time and your husband keep rejecting you. And maybe you have been speaking to your son who has backslided, backslidden, and you are really trying to get him back to come back to church. And try, you try time and time again for years and they just rejected you. And just like Peter, maybe you are looking at a situation right now. You are very disappointed. You have been pulling the nets years after years and you have caught nothing. And you are now at this junction Say yes, enough. I'm hanging out my nets already. I'm washing nets already. I'm no longer going to cast my nets. But this morning, God wants to remind all of us, don't focus on your experience. Don't focus on your circumstances. Focus on what the Lord says. And the, this is what the Lord is saying to you this morning. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your entire household. Maybe you say, Lord, you want me to go for a mission trip? You want me to preach gospel? I, I'm very, someone very timid. I'm not eloquent at all. I, I'm, I know myself. I stutter when I, when I want to preach gospel. You look at your own experience, your own ability and say, it's impossible. I, I don't know. I can't share. Everybody asked me to share gospel. I just couldn't. But you focus on your experience and circumstance. Don't do that. This morning, focus on what the Lord says. Because you say so. You say that do not worry about what to say or how to say. But at the time, you'll be given what to say. And it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Let's grab hold of the promises of God this morning. It's not because of what our experience of circumstance, but because you say so. And maybe you really hope you were challenged last week. You, you, you are very challenged right now to give to the mission. You really hope to give that extra bit more than last year. And, but you're looking at your finances right now. It's really hand to mouth, mouth to hand. And you're wondering to God, God, is it even possible that I squeeze out that little bit more to give it to your kingdom? How is it possible? The circumstance, my experience tells me it will not be enough. But this morning, let us focus on what the Lord says. The Lord says, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over and you will pour into your lap for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Or maybe you are young Christians, so young, that two or three years, you're wondering, how can I even go for a mission trip? I barely know anything about the Bible. I hardly study my Bible. Or even you are long Christians and you look down on your biblical knowledge and say, Lord, how can I even preach for you? The Bible says, do not look down. Let anyone look down on you because you are young. But it set a good example in believers, to the believers in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. So this morning, let's be reminded. Let us not look at our past experience. Let's not hang up our nets because you have been rejected by your parents or by your, sorry, by your husband, or by your children. And when I was worshipping there this morning, I also felt the burden in my heart that some of you are really praying for a backslidden child. Maybe it's a, one of your child who has backslidden, and you are really praying for them, but you really couldn't get them to come back to the Lord. And you are disappointed. You have tried, and you are about to hang up your nets and wash your nets. You are giving up, but the Lord is telling you, don't look at your circumstance. Don't look at your past experience. Focus on what the Lord says. 
Amen. Amen. So the last point that I'd like to share with you is let your nets down. Let your nets down. You know, when Jesus said, launch into the deep and cast your net, what Peter was doing is he was really acting and trusting in God in something that he cannot see to let down the nets. You know, because fish don't come out in the daytime when there's sunlight, they will go deeper to the place where there's dimmer, not much sunlight. But Jesus is asking me to do it right now at the wrong time, at the wrong place, to do the wrong actions. And I'm like, am I just entertaining him? You know, there are two boats. Why he didn't choose the other boat? He happened to want to choose my boat. And now he's asking me to do this. But Peter says, Lord, because you say so, I'm going to act on it. I'm going to trust in you. And he cast out his nets. The truth is, if the nets are not in the water, it don't catch fish. If nets are not in the water, it don't catch fish. It sounds very, very simple and logical and primary school, but it's very profound. You may have been equipped with all the gospel techniques, the sports, four spiritual laws, this and that and everything. But if you just don't open your mouth to preach the gospel, you are not letting your nets into the water. You will definitely not catch any fish in your nets. The church can organize all the evangelistic meeting, getting two horan from Mediacorp to even come from Singapore to have a dinner or getting Alpha course or this evangelistic meeting, that meeting, for you to invite your friends. But if you just don't open your mouth or text a friend or reach out to a friend, your nets are not in the water and the nets will not catch any fish. It will remain useless. Just like the man with just one talent, if he just refused to use his one talent, he just hide it under the ground. And then when the master returned, he would just take the talent and return to the master, say, sorry, I have not caught anything. You may have the best fishing rod. If you just don't throw it out into the sea, it remains the best fishing rod that will be framed up. So a net that does not, that, that are not in water will not catch fish. And this morning, let us put our nets into the water. Nets must be into the water. And how can we let our nets go into the water? We must open up our mouth, share the gospel, speak Jesus in the streets, speak Jesus in the mountains. Offer your time to pray. Pray for your children who have backslidden. Pray for your husband. Pray for family members. Pray for the missionaries. Pray for the mission fields. Just by praying, you are already putting your nets down. That's the very first good start. And offer up your time to accompany people that Jesus has put in your life, the people who are in needs, your colleagues, your friends, and even to the mission field for short-term mission, mid-term mission, or even long-term mission. And give your finances. The moment you take out just your best offering and give it to the Lord, and that's where you have cast your nets into the water. And fish will come out. The fish that will come out, it will be beyond your imagination. It will be so loaded. The man that God is going to put in our hands will be so loaded that the two ships will come and it's still going to sink that two boats. Amen? Because we are willing to obey the Word of God. So this morning, let us be reminded to be fishers of men, to be willing to be interrupted the person in need that God has placed into your life, let us be willing to be interrupted because that is Jesus stepping into your boat. The person, the, the, the word that Holy Spirit has challenged you to go for a mission trip, let us be willing to be interrupted for our whatever plans you already have financially or for your calendar schedule. Let us be willing to be interrupted. Secondly, let us focus on what the Lord says. We say, Lord, because you say so, and not because I look at my circumstance and my past experience, that fear of rejection that is hindering me from letting down my nest. And lastly, to be a fisherman of men, we need actions. We need to let our nets down. When I was preparing this sermon, I was reflecting, am I a true follower of Jesus Christ? Am I a true follower of Jesus Christ? Because if I am the true follower of Jesus Christ, then whatever Jesus says should follow. Follow me and I will make you a fisher of men. And I come before the Lord and repent. I say, Lord, 
I'm really not a good fisher of men. But Lord, you help me. You help me, Lord, because I change my heart, Lord. I repent before the Lord. And because sometimes we just refuse to, like what Peter did, he immediately left all his nets and followed Jesus. Sometimes we don't allow Jesus to truly reign in our hearts to be that king, like what we sing this morning, like what Danny prophesied in the name of the Spirit of the Lord. We still want to be entangled by so many things in our lives, to be entangled by media. This, is, this media entanglement has been also speaking to me. We are wasting too much time on media, at least from what I observe of urban people entangling our lives. So much things, so much of our time is wasted just on media, be it social media, all kinds of media that's bombarding us. We got to let the nets immediately leave, left their nets and follow Jesus. If you want to follow Jesus, are you entangled by your pride? Are you entangled by your fear of rejection again and again? What are you entangled with? To this morning, let's come before Lord and say, Lord, I'm going to let all these nets down and I'm going to follow you because, Lord Jesus, I want to be a good fishers of men. Amen? Amen? I'd like to leave you with the last verse. In the Bible, in Jeremiah prophesied that in the last days, it says, Behold, I will send for many fishermen, says the Lord, and they shall fish them. Amen. And let our response be like Isaiah in chapter 6, verse 8. He said, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And Isaiah said, Here am I, Lord. Send me to be the fisherman. And all of us are called to be fishermen. Amen. Amen. Let's just rise to our feet as we respond to the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just close your eyes and I believe God has spoken this, this morning through the worship session. God is speaking to some of you to be the king and don't let all these nets entangle you. Just like Peter, this morning, some of you will need to immediately let down all these nets. It could be entanglement of media. You know, Lord, I'm going to go back and just drop all my media that is wasting my time. It could be your pride. You got to come to this morning to the Lord and say, Lord, I humble myself. I'm a proud man. I'm a man with, proud, with pride, Lord. It could be your unwillingness to forego your finance, holding dearly to your hearts. And only you know what is that net that's entangling you. And I have two altar calls this morning. I'm not going to ask you to come in front, but I'm just going to encourage you. If it's you, you just raise your hand up high for Jesus to see. I'm going to close my eyes. I won't even look at it. It's not for me, but for Christ. The first order call is, I feel in my heart that, you know, you have a family member. I just felt strongly it's a husband or a children whom you are trying to, whom you have kind of given, given up to preach the gospel too because you have tried so many years and just like Peter just like Peter you have you are you are downcast you are disappointed after so many years you are giving up you are going to wash your nets and you're going to wash your hands off but the Lord is encouraging you this morning through His Word to say don't give up pick up the nets cast into the deep sea this morning take up your courage one more time and if that's you I just want you to raise your hand right now to the Lord and you can quickly put it down if that's you, you have a family member that you really have given up preaching the gospel, I want you to just raise your hand and say, Lord, I'm going to try again. I'm going to cast that nets again. You may put your hands down. The second call is for anyone whom you think that you have not been really casting down your nets. Your nets have been hanging. You want to let it down to the deep sea. You want to let your nets catch fish. You want to let your nets to be in the water. And this morning, God is speaking to you and you feel convicted that, Lord, I need to let my nets down into the water, be it to pray, be it to share, or be it to give. If that's you, I just want you to quickly raise your hand to the Lord and you can put it down. Hallelujah. Let us all just spend a few minutes just to pray in tongues. 
Let's begin to open up our spirit. Hallelujah. Oh yes, change our hearts, O oh Lord, this morning. Convict us, O oh God. Holy Spirit, come and speak to our hearts, O oh Lord. Lord, help us to be fishers of men. Help us to be true followers of Jesus Christ. Lord, we repent before you for our, for our cold and hard, cold and hardened heart, Lord Jesus. Oh, begin at your place to speak out in tongues and begin to respond to the Lord wherever God is speaking to your hearts. If you have a children who has backslidden, a husband who keeps on rejecting the gospel of Christ, may just grab hold of this opportunity and begin to pray for their salvation and begin to cast your net. Even right now in this place, you do not need to wait when you, the time when you go home. You can cast your nets right now. Let's pray. Let's respond with this song. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I speak Jesus If you like the bonus, raise your hand and say Lord, I want to speak to you Both Speak your name boldly I just want to speak the name of Jesus to every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name Life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Your name is power. Hallelujah. Your name is power. Your name is He. Yes, your name is life. There is power in your name. Your name above our names, say every stronghold shine through the shadows, the light of fire. Shout Jesus in the mountain, shout Jesus in the stream, shout Jesus in the mountains, shout Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every end. Jesus for my family, Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name, Jesus. One last time, Jesus in the mountains. Shout Jesus in the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. The Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus, your name is power, your name is power, 
your name is healing. Your name is sign. Make every stronghold shine through the shadows and like a fire. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we come before you this, Lord, this morning, Lord. If there's any one of us who is ashamed of your gospel, Lord, we come and repent before you. For your Bible says, if we are ashamed of your name, you will also be ashamed of us. But Lord, this morning, Lord, we want to come before you and say, God, we are proud of your gospel. We are proud of your name. Help us, Lord, to not be timid, oh God. Remove all nets of fear, all nets of media, all nets of of discouragement, all nets that is entangling us, our pride, our, our, our fear, our, our, our fear of surrendering to you, oh God, just help us entangle, disentangle all these nets in Jesus' name, Father. And I just pray that we, all of us will be, will be proud of your name. We'll be sharing your name with boldness. Father, just empower us this morning to cast our nets into the water to cast and let our nets go deep within the water lord thank you jesus for we want to be a true follower of jesus christ we want to be fishers of men thank you lord you hear our cry you hear our response this morning to you lord honor our response to god in jesus name we pray amen amen thank you thank you let's give god a big hand amen